Chapter 8, Systems Design, Job Order Costing. Managers need to assign costs to products to facilitate external financial reporting and internal decision making. So in this lecture, we will il illustrate how absorption costing approach is used to calculate product costs, known as job order costing. Learning objective number one, let's distinguish between process costing and job order costing and identify the companies that would use each costing method. A process costing system is best used by companies that produce many units of a single product and when one unit of output is indistinguishable from another unit of output because the number of units of output are identical, the company will probably use an average cost system to determine product cost. An example of a company that may consider a process costing system is here, Asia Pulp and Paper. This is a manufacturer of paper products. When we think of paper manufacturing, we generally think about the continuous production of a single roll of paper that may eventually be cut into sizes needed by customers. Other companies that would benefit from process costing are Kang Shi Fu, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Nestle. Certainly, the desire of all of these companies is to make each unit of output consistent with the quality standards established. And for example, Coca-Cola, which is bottled in California, should taste identical to the same Coca-Cola bottled in New York City. A company would use a job order costing system when many different products are produced each period. Products are usually manufactured to customer specifications and are unique in nature. The unique nature of each order requires tracing or allocating costs to each job and maintaining cost records for each job. Companies that may benefit from using job order costing systems include Boeing, Tata Consultancy and Walt Disney Studios. Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China is an aircraft manufacturer. Tata Consultancy is perhaps the largest information technology service provider in Asia. The company works on projects that are unique to customer needs. Hong Kong Aircraft Engineering provides routine maintenance and emergency service to aircrafts. So in this chart, we see an overview of the differences between a job order and a process costing system. With job order costing, many jobs are worked on during the period. With process costing, a single product is produced for a long period of time. With job order costing, costs are accumulated by individual jobs. With process costing, costs are accumulated by departments. With job order costing, average unit costs are computed by job. With process costing, average unit costs are computed for a particular operation of by department. So let's check our knowledge. Which of the following companies would be likely to use job order costing rather than process costing? probably of those three. The paper and ketchup manufacturers would probably use process costing rather than job order system. Architects, that's a mistake. D&E are correct. A 
Let's identify the documents used in the job order costing system. In a job order costing system, direct materials and direct labor are traced directly to each job as the work is performed. Manufacturing overhead, which includes indirect materials and indirect labor, represents other manufacturing costs, such as the power used to run the machinery in the factory. Manufacturing overhead cannot be traced directly to the specific jobs. Rather, it is allocated to jobs on the basis of a predetermined rate. The job cost sheet that's shown here is used by the accounting department to track the direct and indirect costs associated with a given job. A job number uniquely identifies each job. Direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead costs are accumulated for each job. The job cost sheet is a subsidiary ledger to the work and process account. We will look at a job cost sheet used by a hypothetical company called Pair Company. The company has a job that calls for construction of wooden cargo crates. And you can see on this chart the separate sections for direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. In addition, we have a section to summarize the costs of the job. Once the sales order has been received and a production order issued, the production department prepares a materials requisition form to specify the type, quantity, and total cost of materials. Here is the materials requisition form completed for job A143. The requisition is number X76890. A worker has requested 12 2x4s, 12 feet long, and 20 1x6s, 12 feet long. The unit cost of the number is shown in the co unit cost column. The quantity requested is multiplied by the unit cost to arrive at the total cost of for materials. The person in charge of the store room will issue the number once the materials requisition form has been properly authorized. Once the materials have been issued by the store room, they are charged to the job cost sheet for job number A143. The accounting department records the total direct cost, $116, on the appropriate job cost sheet. Notice the, the material requisition number, X76869, is included on the job cost sheet to provide easy access to the source document. We have a proper reference for the requisition number and the total amount. If we need to look at the details of the $116 cost, we can ask to see materials requisition form X76869. Nine zero. Workers use time tickets to record the amount of time that they spent on each job. Here is the time ticket for an employee who worked eight hours on job A143. The employee's hourly pay rate is $11, so the total cost charged to the job will be $88. Time ticket, number 36, serves as the major source document for labor costs charged to this job. So let's look at the labor posting to the job cost sheet. The accounting department records the labor costs for each time ticket onto the job cost sheet. On the job cost sheet, we can see that the time ticket number 36 posted eight hours to job A123. A143. The total amount of the direct labor is $88. This amount is also posted to the summary section of the job cost sheet. So 
So let's compute predetermined overhead rates and explain why estimated overhead costs rather than actual overhead costs are used in the costing process. Manufacturing overhead is applied to all jobs that are in process. We apply overhead using a base we believe causes overhead costs to be incurred. Some companies allocate manufacturing overhead using direct labor hours or machine hours. Part two, we must allocate overhead costs to jobs for a variety of reasons. First, it's difficult, if not impossible, to actually trace overhead costs to a particular job. The cost of grease for machinery to manufacture our product is part of our manufacturing costs. It would be impossible to accurately trace the amount of grease consumed to manufacture one unit of output. Manufacturing overhead also includes a number of different costs and it would be very difficult to gather all of them together in time to charge them to a particular job. A job may be complete and sold pre before we can determine the actual overhead costs incurred. And finally, many types of overhead are fixed in nature even though output fluctuates during the period. So to facilitate the allocation of manufacturing overhead to each job, we calculate a predetermined overhead rate before the period begins. Predetermined overhead rate is POHR. This rate is calculated by dividing the total estimated manufacturing overhead for the coming period estimated by the total, num total units of the allocation base. If our allocation base is machine hours, then we would estimate the total number of machine hours used in production in the coming period. Ideally, the allocation base should be a cost driver as it causes overhead to be incurred. Predetermined overhead rates that rely upon estimated data are often used because Actual overhead rates for the period are simply not known until the end of the period. Thus, they inhibit the ability to estimate job costs during the period. And two, actual overhead costs can fluctuate seasonally, thus misleading decision makers. The predetermined overhead rate is calculated using a three-step process. We must estimate the level of production for the period. Next, we estimate the total amount of the allocation base in the denominator that would be required for that level of production. Finally, we estimate the total manufacturing overhead cost in the numerator that would be incurred for the estimated amount of the allocation base. So the predetermined overhead rate is calculated by dividing step two by step three. We calculate the predetermined overhead rate before the period begins. As we work on a particular job, we apply overhead by multiplying the predetermined rate times the actual level of activity. If overhead is applied on the basis of machine hours, we would apply overhead by multiplying the predetermined rate by the actual number of machine hours used on a particular job. This is called normal costing system. Recall the equation for calculating the predetermined manufacturing overhead rate. At Perico, Per Company, overhead is allocated on the basis of direct labor hours and worked on a work that are worked on a particular job. Para Company's predetermined overhead rate is four dollars per direct labor hour. At per company, each job will be charged four dollars of overhead rate for each hour of direct labor worked. 
So let's see how this works. An employee worked a total of eight hours on job 143. Our predetermined overhead rate is $4 per direct labor hour. So we will apply $32 of overhead to this job. This computation is shown in this overhead section and in the summary section. The total direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead costs assigned to job A143 is $236. Since this particular job included two units of production, the average unit cost is $118. We calculated the average by dividing the total cost, 236, by 2 to get 118. We cannot say that the average cost per crate in the future will be $118. If a third crate was produced, we would not add any additional fixed overhead costs. So the incremental cost of an additional unit will be something less than $118. So let's do a quick check. And this problem could, could be, take some time to solve, so I'm just going to show the answers. We need all three elements of product cost in this company. So here we go. Here's the correct answer, $730. You can see that the costs are direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead incurred for this job, WR53. We begin by calculating the predetermined overhead rate of $38 per direct labor hour. Since we work 10 hours on the job, we will have $150, which is $15 hourly rate times 10 hours of direct labor and $380, which is $38 per direct labor hour times 10 hours of manufacturing overhead. So learning objective number four, let's understand the flow of costs in a job order costing system and prepare appropriate journal entries to record the costs. The entire accounting process begins with the sales order received from a customer. Once the sale order is received, a production order is created to initiate work on a job. From the production order, we are able to determine the direct and indirect materials that we will need to requisition from the storeroom. We now know that the materials requisition form is a critical source document in the preparation of the job cost sheet. Direct material costs are charged to specific jobs. Indirect material costs are included in manufacturing overhead. As employees work on the job covered by the production order, time tickets are prepared for recording both direct and indirect labor costs. Direct labor costs are charged to specific jobs. Indirect labor costs are included in manufacturing overhead. Indirect materials and indirect labor are parts of manufacturing overhead. Other overhead costs are charged to the manufacturing overhead account as incurred. 
as we have seen, the predetermined overhead rate is used to apply manufacturing overhead costs to jobs. Learning Objectives 4 and 7. Understand the flow of costs in the job order costing system and prepare appropriate journal entries to record costs. And then use T accounts to show the flow of costs in the job order costing system. So learning objective number four is to understand the flow of costs in the job order costing system and prepare the journal entries. All right, in, in learning objective seven, we're going to do T accounts to show the flow of costs. Transactions in T account and journal entry form that capture the flow of costs in the job order costing system are shown here hereafter. When raw materials are purchased, they are debited to the raw materials inventory account and credited to accounts payable. The cost of direct materials requisition is debited to work in process and added to the job cost sheet which serve as a subsidiary ledger. To account for the indirect materials requisition, the manufacturing overhead account is debited and the raw materials inventory is credited. So here's an example of the general journal entry used to record the purchase of raw materials on account. We debit raw materials and credit accounts payable. When materials are requisitioned from raw materials inventory, we debit work in process for direct materials and debit manufacturing overhead for indirect materials. Direct labor is debited to work in process and added to the job cost sheet, which serves as a subsidiary ledger and credited to salaries and wages payable. Indirect labor is debited to manufacturing overhead and credited to salaries and wages payable. Cost of direct labor is debited to work in process account, while the indirect labor is debited to the manufacturing overhead account. The cost of labor, direct and indirect, is credited to the salaries and wages payable account. Additional manufacturing overhead amounts are debited to the manufacturing overhead account. The debit side of the manufacturing overhead account represents actual overhead incurred during the period. The credit side of the entry is the various liability accounts, for example, accounts payable and property taxes payable. The credit side will also include prepaid assets, like prepaid insurance. The contra accounts for items like depreciation. This journal entry represents the accumulation of other actual overhead amounts like property taxes on the manufacturing plant, insurance on the plant structure, and depreciation of manufacturing assets. Learning objective five is to apply overhead cost to work in process using a predetermined overhead rate. The manufacturing overhead account is a clearing account. The actual amount of overhead incurred during the period of the debit side of the account will almost certainly not equal the amount applied to work in process on the credit side of the account. This requires a year-end adjustment. When we apply overhead to a particular job, we 
debit work in process inventory and the co job cost sheet and then we credit the manufacturing overhead account. Amounts on the credit side of the manufacturing overhead account represent overhead applied. So this journal entry shows the application of overhead to work in process inventory. For applied overhead, we debit work in process and credit manufacturing overhead. We previously discussed the treatment of selling general and administrative salaries expense during the period. Non-manufacturing costs are charged to the respective expense accounts, marketing, selling, administrative, in the period the expenses were incurred. These journal entries illustrate the expensing of non-manufacturing costs in the current period. So, learning objective number six. Let's prepare schedules of costs of goods manufactured and costs of goods sold. The sum of all amounts transferred from work in process to finished goods represents the cost of goods manufactured for the period. A job is completed, its costs are transferred from the work in process inventory to finished goods inventory. The transfer is accomplished with a debit to finished goods inventory and a credit to work in process inventory. When a finished job is sold to the customer, the cost of that job is transferred from finished goods inventory to cost of goods sold. Recall that cost of goods sold is an income statement account. If only a portion of the units associated with a particular job are shipped, then the unit cost figure from the job cost sheet is used to determine the amount of the journal entry. Assuming the company uses a perpetual inventory system, two journal entries are required to record the sale. The first entry is to debit either accounts receivable or cash and credit sales for the selling price of the job completed. The second entry is to debit cost of goods sold and credit finished goods inventory for the costs incurred to complete the job. The, fin the difference between the selling price and the cost is the company's gross margin on the job. Learning objective number eight, let's compute under-applied or over-applied overhead cost and prepare the journal entries to close the balance in manufacturing overhead to the appropriate accounts. When we apply overhead on the basis of a predetermined overhead rate, it's likely that the amount of overhead applied will be different from the amount of overhead actually incurred during the period. When there is a difference, we refer to the, the amount as either under-applied overhead or over-applied overhead. Under-applied overhead exists when the amount of over-applied overhead to the jobs during the period using the predetermined overhead rate is less than the total amount of overhead actually incurred during the period. Over applied overhead exists when the amount of overhead applied to jobs during the period using the predetermined overhead rate is greater than the total amount of overhead actually incurred during the period. So, let's assume that pair company incurred actual overhead of $650,000 during the period and worked a total of 170,000 hours direct labor. Pair company applies overhead at the rate of $4 per direct labor hour worked. 
How much overhead did Pear Company apply to jobs during the period? Pear Company would have applied $680,000 of overhead during the period. That is $4 per direct labor hour times the 170,000 direct labor hours actually worked. So, Parrot Company has over-applied overhead for the year of $30,000. So what will Parrot Company do? The difference between the overhead cost applied to work in process and the actual overhead costs of a period is termed either under-applied or over-applied overhead. Pair Company incurred actual overhead of $650,000 and applied $680,000. So the company over-applied $30,000 of overhead for the year. So how do we dispose of this over-applied overhead? This is how we can use it in an example. Tiger Company had, a, had actual manufacturing overhead of $1.2 million and a predetermined overhead rate of $4 per machine hour. Tiger worked 290,000 machine hours during the period. Tiger's manufacturing overhead is underapplied. The correct answer is $50,000 underapplied overhead. So Tiger incurred $1.21 million of actual overhead, but applied only $1. 0.16 million. So the company underapplied its overhead costs during the period. There are two ways to dispose of over or under applied overhead. The more complex approach is to allocate a portion of the over or under applied overhead to work in process inventory, finished goods, and then the cost of goods sold. This allocation would be based on the relative dollar value in each of the three accounts involved. An easier way to deal with the problem and the method Perico uses is to adjust cost of goods sold for the entire amount of the over or under applied overhead. We know that Perico applied $680,000 of overhead, but incurred only $650,000 of actual overhead. The manufacturing overhead account has $30,000 credit balance, representing the over-applied overhead during the year. Perico chooses to adjust cost of goods sold for the entire amount. The adjustment necessary at the end of the year is to debit the manufacturing overhead account for $30,000 and to credit or reduce the cost of goods sold by the same amount. Let's assume that at the end of the period, pair company had the following overhead costs in each of the accounts showing. We may elect to allocate the over or under applied overhead to ending work in process inventory, ending finished goods inventory, and cost of goods sold. We will complete the following allocation of the $30,000 of over applied overhead. We will reduce ending work in process inventory by $3,000 finished goods inventory by $9,000 and cost of goods sold for the period by $18,000. The journal entry to record the allocation is to debit manufacturing overhead for $30,000, credit work in process inventory for $3,000, credit finished goods inventory for $9,000, and credit cost of goods sold for $18,000. We have provided a good way for dealing with 
over-applied or under-applied overhead. We've shown the impact of both the allocation approach to the solution and the direct adjustment to cost of goods sold approach. Alternative two is considered more accurate, but it's more complex to apply. It's a good idea to review this chart over and over. So let's check our knowledge. What effect will the over-applied overhead have on pair companies' net operating income? The net operating income will increase. We have assumed that the company has used one single predetermined overhead rate for the entire factory. Many large companies use multiple predetermined overhead rates. Using multiple overhead rates can create more complexity. But the use of multiple rates promotes greater accuracy in the allocation process because it reflects the differences across departments in how overhead costs are incurred. Although our attention is focused upon manufacturing applications, it bears re-emphasizing that job order costing is also used in services industry. In a law firm, each client represents a job. Legal forms and similar inputs represent direct materials. The time spent by attorneys represents the direct labor. The cost of secretaries, clerks, rent, depreciation, and so forth represents the overhead. As in any area of business, technology can play an important role in the accounting process. New and easier to use programming languages and the mastery of computers help spread technology throughout the organization. When we combine EDI or web-based programming languages such as XML, barcoding eliminates the inefficiencies and inaccuracies associated with many manual clerical processes. So, let's look at a activity-based job order costing. Learning objective number nine, apply job order costing in an activity-based costing environment. Here, we see indirect costs of a basic product, including sales and marketing, research and development, product design, and these are traced and allocated to different product lines, such as multimedia, which is a laptop notebook, and based on appropriate cost drivers using the activity-based concept. When job order comes, the additional co direct costs and variation costs are traced to individual jobs, whereas overhead costs are allocated to the job based on overhead application rate for the product line. All costs are directly traced to the jobs based on appropriate cost driver rates. Advanced production and tracing systems such as radio frequency identification together with appropriate ERP are used to help such approaches.